In a universe with so many unanswered questions, the vast stretches of the unknown and the unanswered and the unfinished still far outstripe our collective comprehension. We will shed light onto the darkness. We will explore the universe to find what is really out there. We are the disclosure. We are the order of light. At um, Houston Airport, uh, Houston International, uh, abbreviated IH, IAH, and it's a fairly large airport, I don't know, four by four square miles of real estate down there in, uh, outside of Houston. So we're taxing in, um, and we're coming up, we're gonna go from the, we uh, using Los Angeles airport terminology, the north complex to the south complex of the airport. So we're taxing in, and I look off to the right, First officer didn't see it, I don't know why, and he goes, I go, what's that? And we look out, and there's this um, seemingly large drone motionlessly hovering over the northern airline ramp at about 400 feet. And it's about the size of this, well, maybe two-thirds the size of this room is my guess. Once again, blue sky, I don't have any background. It's hard for me to figure out what the, uh, 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 the size of it is because I have no, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, reference, you know, um, I can't. So, you know, yeah, compare it. Um, fairly large, and and looking up at it, it was black, and it was either a V-shaped or an upside down seven. It was just stationary, like 400 feet above the ramp, where there's all kind of airliners going for a whole mile of ramp of airplanes. And uh, I asked the first officer, uh, different first officer, I said, can you ask the, the ground control if they know what that is, if they know about that? And he did, and there's this pause, and all we got back was Roger. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like going, um, so, and, and I didn't have the thing where you could dis discern it that it was not, um, something weird because we're, it's through a lot of glass. So I could, if it was make a noise, I couldn't hear it. So in the fact that air traffic control just responded after delay, Roger, like they knew about it, but they're not gonna comment about it. And there's a thing called a, an ATIS and an ODOM. ATIS is an automatic terminal information service where information every, every, one, every hour, unless there's a change, they send us all the information about the airport, the barometric altimeter, the, uh, the temperature, uh, the winds, uh, which runways are active, which runways are for takeoff, which ones are for landing, and any little weird things that are wrong with the airport, like the, the, these lights are out, or the ILS is out for this runway or whatever. So there was nothing in there about a drone, a large drone over the airport. And also in the notice, which is notices for airmen, there was nothing in there about a drone activity over the base. Watch out for it, you hit it, you're, you're gonna be in a statistic, uh, nothing. So, and I went, you know, once again, I wish I would have uh, taken, taken the time to say, hey, Brown, we're going to stop right here. I'm going to pull off on this ramp over here and stop. I, you know, I would have been, the chief pilot would have been calling me the next day. Like, what did you do that for? But um, <clears throat> once again, 150 people on board that are trying to make a connection. So uh, I didn't do that, didn't think, because uh, I would have had my, probably my first unidentified uh, um, aerial phenomenal uh, photograph on an actual phone uh, if I would be able to get my Samsung to focus through the windshield. Um, but I, I didn't do that. Uh, and incidentally, if you, if somebody operates a drone, uh, uh, UAS, small UAS, whatever you want to call it, uh, over an air, you know, aviation airspace, there's all kinds of protocols on FR, Federal Aviation Regulation 107 that they have to notify people, get permission, and you can be, if they're going to operate over one of the United States' busiest airports, uh, I could see cumulative of 10 hours of permissions to get that done. And there would probably be an uh, air traffic controller with the person with the remote control operating that drone. And then, so the, now the quest to, to finish up the, my, the mystery, um, um, I was, I'm the former wing commander for the Civil Air Patrol for New Jersey for the last four years, just stepped on back in July. And we have, the Silver Patrol has the world's largest collection of drones. 
Uh, small UAS is maybe China, but we don't know that. But we have thousands of these things for all of our different missions, aerospace education, cadet programs, emergency services, operations, search and rescue, counter drug, counter small drone activities. The Air Force even buys us drones that we fly into military bases and we play the bad guy and they use their weapons, uh, part of the beam, microwave guns, whatever they use, flying nets to take out these nice $10,000 drones that the taxpayers bought. Um, but I've never seen a drone that's in a V-shape or like a set the shape of a, a, the number seven. And once again, it's hard to tell when you're looking at something from an angle uh, and maybe a half mile away what shape it is. So I, 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 uh, I happen to have a lot of friends in the aerospace industry and I've been asking questions. Is this, does anybody make a drone that's in a V-shape or like a seven? And I've had a couple of people sort of under their breath saying, uh, the Israeli military. Uh, and I'm going, okay, Israel, Houston, Texas. Why would these mil Israeli military drones, which may be top secret, why would they be over Houston, Texas, right in plain view where there's potentially thousands of people that could see it? And that, okay, that doesn't make sense. Um, uh, if, if, if this was a real drone, uh, terrestrially made, uh, the people are probably in jail now because they, they violated innumerable federal aviation regulations by flying the drone that low over a giant airport that's very busy, that's landing, you know, 60 airplanes an hour and taking off 60 airplanes an hour, airliners. Uh, so they would be in uh, a lot of trouble. So uh, those are my sightings. Um, I just wanted to share those with you. Um, and I want to thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. And uh, I... I welcome to be at this very distinguished panel that I'm not uh, I'm not uh, not qualified to be at, <laughs> but but I want to thank everybody. Thank you very much.